this is what guys are typically doing. Like if they need to make a transition, they're just they're just cutting the copper, folding it past itself, maybe putting a rivet in it and soldering it, right? And a pocket fold. Dominic was working on it there. I did it here in paper. So this is poor man's copper, right? Start learning this stuff with paper so you're not wasting a ton of money. Um, but a pocket fold, instead of making that cut like this, you're taking the copper and you're folding it past itself. There's no cut there, but I've created that, that angle. So nothing will leak here, right? So that's a pocket fold. And that's how, that's the first step of creating these sweep seams. This is the same thing, but just showing the paper, it's easy to fold it. You can kind of see what's happening. The yellow again is the pocket that's, that's disappearing. That's copper we don't need. So this is the angle. Like if I took a tea bevel, lay it on the roof, find the roof to chimney angle. Transfer that to this piece of paper or copper. That's that. Everything else I don't want, right? I just need that much copper. Everything else I want to get rid of. So that's what that yellow section is, okay? Um, and that's where the pockets form. So, <clears throat> found the angle. Rest of that's the pocket. You have to bisect it. And that's kind of a key thing with pocket folding. The first thing you have to learn is how to bisect an angle. This is a tool that simplifies that. I got this off of uh, the internet. I got like three of them off the internet. There were like three different companies that sold them. This is called an angle divisor. If you don't have that handy dandy tool, you can use a compass to, to bisect this angle. Put the compass on that point. You're scribing it over here on that line, scribing it over here on that line. And then you might have to open your compass up a little bit, but off of those two marks, you're scribing it kind of out in the center. And where those two lines cross, from that point to that point, that's your bisected angle. So that's how we do it on the roof. I mean, I keep a compass in my belt. Dominic keeps a compass in his belt, and we don't carry this thing around. I've actually never used this, really. I just brought it out for today to show you guys. Very handy, though. Like, I wish I would have had this tool when I was building my house and cutting trim and stuff like that. It would have come in extremely handy. So that's the first step. you got to find your baseline. Then you get your valley valley pieces. Sometimes it's easier to run like if you're cutting valley pieces of 10 foot sections. Cut a 10 foot section just just have it run short at the top of the valley and so then you're working with small pieces like kind of what we have here. So you bring your valley piece up. I'm going to mark it right here on the ridge. I'm going to mark it up here where that line is but it's hidden. Typically this roof plane would run past. So I could easily just mark it on the front of the copper here. And I'm going to mark it in the center. So I have to get a line across here. And that's going to be where the, the sweep, uh, the base of that sweep sits. So Dominic's using a nail set just to transfer the mark from one side of the copy to the other side. That's marking both sides. And he'll do that in the center too. So we use these Rau or Ru or I don't know how you pronounce it really, these uh, tools from Europe. So he's just connecting the dots at this point. Um, the main seaming iron we use is this one. Uh, this is 7 8 I believe. So we're going to mark that to 7 8 so we can easily seam over that, that first lap.
Yeah, mark it for seven eighths down there. So it's over here. So you're making this, you're leaving seven eighths on, cutting the rest off. Yeah, I'm leaving seven eighths because that's what this is. But um, like I mean, we could do like a two inch standing seam here, but typically you want to get your ridge over it, you know. So you don't really want too much sticking up. And then up here. We flatten that down so we can run our slates up and over it. So you don't want too much copper sticking up. You kind of want a minimum of copper. And I would say like three quarters of an inch is about as short as you can go. That seven eighths is going to be finished. Yeah. Actually, no, it'll be shorter than that. It'll be. You're making two three eighths inch folds, is that right? We'll scribe like five sixteenths, so we'll have um, more like uh, like a three eighths. Pretty short. Like you said, short enough to get in. This is a twelve inch diameter. This is a pattern I keep with me for when I'm doing this stuff. You you don't want to go much tighter than that. You can maybe go to like eleven inch. Um, maybe 10 inch, but if, if you do too tight of a, a radius, you'll tear your copper. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the kind of device. This one? Yeah. Yeah, so this is... That's our bisect. That's going to be the other fold. So yeah, you mark two inches to both those spots and run that sweep. have, it's really hard to see, but we have a bisect line of our baseline here, then we have the angle bisected, and so we're going to snip it. So I'm notching this. Um, I'm which is just I'm cutting out some copper that I don't need, so it'll make it a little bit easier to seam over. And you only do it on the on the lower side. So we're gonna we're gonna lift the from the baseline now, just some hand tongs. Kind of what we're working with there. We got the creases started and we'll get it up in place now. I find instead of uh, doing everything right on the table, um, I normally fold this up in place. Pocket, you always want to fold it in the direction water is going to flow. So the upper side of the pocket is going to fold downhill. I don't think that we do. Okay, 
Okay, so this side's done. We'll get the other side in place. And the second fold will come five sixteenths below that. So I just notched it. That's all that is. It just makes it easier for me to beat it all over. Like in a pocket fold, you don't want to flatten the bottom of the pocket really tight. Um, you want to you want to let it billow. You just need to flatten it, flatten the hell out of it up here, where you're gonna fold it over twice. If you seam it together too tightly, over time the expansion contraction, it could actually maybe work a hole in it there. Yeah, yeah, you want to leave it loose. So the first fold was seven eighths. The second one is gonna be what? It's uh, it's really it's oversized right now. As soon as we get that side on. The trim it. We'll, we'll scribe a 5 16 Extra 5 16 like above yeah. the 7 8. Hmm. It's probably going to need beat in up here a little bit. Roofers, right there. <laughs> <laughs> so now I got that other valley piece in. I'm gonna scribe it with my compass. Holy shit for me. I'll set it about five sixteenths, something like that. That's what uh, I want this second piece to be that much higher than that first piece. And the reason I didn't mark it ahead of time on the bench was because sometimes it can be a little off. And this way it just guarantees that it's perfect. And then we'll trim that off. You can go ahead. So the advantage of this is uh, like a solder joint up here, you got big 10 foot spans of valley. You know, there can be stresses on that, it can crack over time. I mean, I think that method works fine. Um, this is just bomb proof. It's never gonna fail. Um, you don't have to lug your soldering iron up on the roof, let it warm up, bring your propane tank up. Don't even work with chemicals. But yeah, so we got this trimmed off. Um, we just want to be, there's a little bit of a bubble here. We want to make sure it's all real tight. So why don't you seam that together so it's a little tighter. And then we'll start the double fold. Like once you kind of have it seamed over to about where he has it, like you can smash it down a little more right here, just so it's a 90. Um, this is a good opportunity to make sure you have the right kind of reveal here. You can you can trim it off. Like see right here, there's a little kind of like nipple sticking out. I can trim that off now, so it's all like perfectly 5 16 excess copper. In here is where you can use the curved anvil if you want. I tend to just like to use this thing instead of swapping out because they're kind of hard to place on the roof and if you drop one, you could kill somebody. It's really important at this stage to make sure there are no bubbles in it because when you do that second fold, it can open up. So you want to make sure it's seamed pretty tight. Is that copper stretching at the radius? So yeah. It's actually stretching a little bit? Yep. There? Thank you. 
So we, we bent over a little too much right here, but that's all right. Um, we're still pretty much getting a, a double lock. Um, we want this to be low because the ridge is going to come over it. And then this, once this is seamed over, we'll actually flatten it down. It would extend up a little higher. I just trimmed it off because there's nothing back here. But we flatten it completely down because our slates are going to overlap the valley five inches here. So it has to be flattened about five inches down. Um, and we never have any problem with that. Again, this is 20 ounce, you know, it's a little tougher, a little more work to see him over, 16 ounce. That's pretty much the gist of it there. I mean, I'll flatten this over just so you guys can see. I typically put a little bit of weight on the back side here. And again, this would be that much higher, so the slates would easily get over that. And that's, that's a double it. lock sweep seam on a valley top.